Hey everybody, this is Andrew Tracy, one of the developers behind Cybernights, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial on matrix hacking. We're working on the real tutorial, but as a stopgap, we're going to release this video that will help anybody who has any trouble, hopefully. So here's my hacker, Dade. We've reached a blue highlighted matrix host on a larger level, and we're going to hack it. There are a couple of reasons we might do this. Uh, you can see that it's connected to four security devices, which I could disable. Maybe I'm looking to steal pay data, or I want to try to find an APU, which would help me reduce the security level on the, on the level. So by clicking, I'm just going to jack in, pulls his quantum wire from his matrix link, and hits the host. I have in advance uh, revealed this entire host so that we can see all the different uh, node types. Usually these are hidden, so when we go back and continue the next part of this, we'll do it with them hidden. But here we are in the, uh, you can click center camera to see where you are. We're in this terminal node. That's where we currently are at. It's highlighted green to show that. And here are a couple of points of interest. This is a firewall, makes it a little harder to get through. Access nodes, these are sort of defensive nodes for the host. These red glowing nodes are SCU. They are security control units. They're responsible for managing security devices. So if we can get over there, then we're going to have control and take over those nodes. We'll have control of the security devices, be able to turn them off for extended periods of time in the real world. Uh, SPU is a uh, kind of a powerful node in the, in the hierarchy. The data warehouse is where we can find files. Here we've got finance records, another data warehouse and another data warehouse and this big glowing circle that is larger than the SPU is the CPU this is the center of the sort of the control hub for the entire host if we're able to take over this node and spike it which means we kill all the IC and spike it we can uh, really get a big boost for ourselves in the host we'll talk about that sometimes that's your objective is to spike the CPU this is sort of corrupting and taking control of the host completely okay so here's the map uh, and we're going to uh, come back in just a second and look at it without all of the nodes revealed. We can see when it's revealed, we can see where we might go to disable security. There's looting uh, opportunities here in four spots and the, S the CPU is there. Okay, so that was a hard cut, but we're here we are back at the uh, matrix host without cheating. So we ha don't have a, a leverage that reveals everything. This is usually the situation you're going to be in. Now what I can do to, ex I would need to explore and take over and exploit parts of this system. So to do that I'm going to either use talents, which are trained in my hackers, class tree, hard shell, overclock. They have regular charges like a regular talent and a mission and have a, a recharge time. Uh, or I'm going to use programs, which a program I load onto my deck and then I get to use it for a number of charges and when I've used all the charges it unloads. So uh, there are two critical stats for your deck that help you understand how you can load how many programs you can load a turn. Deck active memory is your RAM. This is the number of the amount of program size that you can keep loaded at any given time. So if I hit 300 QB of total programs loaded my ram is maxing out i cannot load more programs io is a turn by turn speed of being able to pull programs out of memory and move them into ram so my io allows me to load a program so you can see if i hover over scan i'm going to add it will add 60 io because i'm loading it out of memory and putting it into active memory and it will also chew up 60 active memory so that's what you're looking for. You kind of want to be able to understand the concept of loading that. Now I've loaded scan. It's a program I can start to use. Um, and if I want to use load another program, then I'm continuing to chew up that active memory and that IO. AP is the other major pool that you're going to be spending. You can see to scan, I'm going to spend three AP. To connect here, I'm going to spend two AP to use uh, hard shell, I'm going to use 5 AP. So as you go through each turn, your AP, uh, which is a much higher number when you're in the matrix, is going to go down. Uh, and so at the end of your turn, you're either going to be out of AP, you're going to be out of IO, and you can't load any more programs, and all your charges are burnt, or you're just thinking that this is a good time to take a break, like to pause in your hack and 
refresh the turn. Hacks are multi-turn. So when you run out of pools, if you're out of AP or your IO is totally filled up, uh, then you're going to want to end your turn and the rest of the world will get to go back in the meat space and then it will come back to your turn again. So I've loaded scans. So let's click on our current node and we can scan. That's going to reveal IC, intrusion countermeasures, and the node types of adjacent nodes. So I can see that we have a passive IC here and this is a firewall. So I'm going to preload a passive uh, sleaze, which is a counter to a passive IC. So I load that, cost me some AP, eats up my IO, and fills up my deck. But now I'm going to connect for the cost of 2 AP. And here we have a jammer. It's going to steal my action points if I don't deal with it. Luckily, I've preloaded sleaze, and so I'm able to just disable it. Now it's going to sit here and doing nothing unless something happens to bring it back awake again, which we'll talk about. Security escalations may do that. We'll talk about that in a minute. So now I'm going to just click here again and scan. And you can see I reveal another two nodes, another two types of IC. I can pre-plan uh, that I may want to head up this way. So I'm now going to go here. I'm going to deal with this tracer. I'm going to scan again. And now I've loaded a lot of my IO and I'm running out of uh, juice to keep going. That's another active. I'm kind of hitting the wall of what I'm able to do this turn because I've used up a lot of my IO. Thankfully, I have two talents that can help me. Overclock is going to buff my IO and cost me connection uh, every turn. So I'm going to use that. You can see my connection drop by two. Connection is your health perk every time you connect. So if you get booted, you can log back in and you get a hundred percent connection again and get another shot at it deck is more permanent that's the physical hardware that you're working from if it's damaged it's damaged for the whole mission it will heal it repairs when you get back to the safe house but it's damaged for the length of the mission so if i want to do two hacks i have to be careful this is damage i take with me and then you just have your hackers hit points if you get shot by an enemy or you get lethal feedback from the security host, from a matrix host, that is all on your HP and can feasibly kill you. Uh, I'm also gonna use my hard shell talent. We'll look at this one. This brings up, uh, gives me 40 deck shield, which is temporary health that prevents damage from my cyber deck. So uh, this specifically protects the cyber deck health. So now I really have like 140% cyber deck health and uh, that 40 can't take it back to the safe house but it is a blocker to IC that may damage me so when I used overclock a nice thing about that was I got additional 60 IO so now I've got a little bit more headspace and I can get a second copy of deception loaded and I'm going to be able to connect to this node and disable this IC that was going to cause me trouble now I can do whoops no I don't want to unload that sorry if you click on them again you can unload them they will take space out of your active memory that's an act that's a valid thing you might want to do but generally not something you want to do unless you really have a plan as to why okay so i've run out of juice here i'm going to end my turn and i'll come back when it's the hacker's turn again Okay, so that's a hard cut to the next turn. In between, all the other characters in this map went. I got a Cyber Knight's turn, my Vanguard went, all the enemies ran around. There was actually some shooting happening in the background, but Dade is plugged in the Matrix. He has no idea. Uh, he's busy. Well, he might be able to be, get an idea momentarily because he is a new turn, so we've got fresh IO. I'm gonna load scan, uh, and I'm going to load, uh, I'm gonna scan. Center the camera. I'm gonna load scan. Okay, sorry, I clicked that, but it didn't get, didn't take. Okay, I run a scan. There's a trap here. Uh, it is already trapped. I tried to load a cyber. Ah, uh, that's what happened. Sorry. There's a trap. It has a trigger when I try to load a cyber deck program it's kind of more invisible you don't see a trap until you scan twice or it triggers so i was unaware it was there it, it jumped me i got additional q sec tally if i reach 20 to 50 the host gets a response it might wake up i see it might hit me with lethal feedback it'll do nasty things to me so i'm trying to avoid that um and i'm gonna head uh i'm gonna load another uh 
copy of Deception, and I'm headed up this way. And we're going to uh, deceive that one as the higher priority I see more dangerous, and then I'm going to knock out the locker. Now I can, I've reached the security device, so I'm able to uh, look at where that is. So this is a sleeping laser mesh. It's not even turned on yet. So I don't care too much. So I'm going to head back this way. I'm going to load another copy of Deception, and I'm going to head this way. So I got the wrong guess, it looks like. And I'm going to deceive this guy. And I'm going to scan because I suspect there might be a trap. Often in SCUs, APUs, there are traps. So this is a trap. It's sleeping. It will damage my cyber deck if I load a, a program, which I'm not planning to do. And so I'm just going to let it sleep. Right. So now we're going to uh, hit the look at what other things are available here. Um, there's laser meshes. So, so I can go back and I'm going to disable the first two here. Um, I'm going to hack this device turns off done and I'm gonna also hack this device done okay cool so now we've got we've opened up the exit for our friends so that's one of the ways we can use the matrix uh, I didn't head the other direction I didn't try any looting yet um, but now we're gonna take a break and come back and look at the other option which would be CPU spiking Okay, this is a hard cut, but we're back to the CPU now. So this is the other objective you might take, hacking a system. Uh, I have connected. Uh, one of the, the features of the CPU is it can't be remotely scanned. So if you're an adjacent node and you scan, it will not reveal its IC, it will not reveal its type. So you have to get into the node and actually run scan there. I'm kind of running out of juice for the turn, but we'll see if I can get this CPU properly spiked. So what's in the CPU? We have uh, Overlord. Uh, it's going to prevent me from loading programs and a tracer that's gonna uh, buff uh, security tally. So, and to spike the CPU, I need to destroy all of the uh, IC. That's the first requirement. So I've loaded an attack program that's gonna do a certain amount of damage and I'm just gonna take a swing at that. So I'm able to destroy the first one and I have destroyed the second one. And now the second requirement here is that this the CPU has to be uh, fully scanned. So by doing that, I triggered a, a security escalation um, and it tried to wake up IC, but there weren't any local that looked close enough that it could wake them. Um, and so it didn't do it. And now I am at, I have destroyed all the IC in the node and I have, uh, scanned it twice so I'm able to spike the CPU which is going to reveal a bunch of nodes unscanned nodes in the tree and going to significantly reduce the the QSEC uh, the, the security system so it goes back to zero and won't escalate it again until it gets to two so that gives me like a very wide range of time that I can act with impunity in the system and it has scanned it rolls for every unscanned node so it doesn't look like it did a great job scanning additional nodes but that is something that will happen when you spike a CPU CPU spiking is best for continuing to take over the host so if you plan to hang out and smash up the host and steal more things then CPU spiking is to your advantage if you're uh, or if that's maybe the objective of the mission is to spike the CPU you would want to do that if you can find an APU that gives you a bunch of advantages on the real world mission map where you can spike the security tally and the security AI there and similarly cause it to skip escalations okay I hope that this has been helpful it's been a brief tutorial but you can see some of the system in action and the depth that we're playing with here so Good luck, hackers.